Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Perfect. Perfect. As well as Chris, aka CGM. And we can talk about the fucking Redskins being known for it. That's the story. <laughs> And the special guest of the week, formerly known as Barely Good Gamer, Nuclear Nick. How's it going, man? It's going great. I know we've been meaning to do this for a while, so I really appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you for podcast. for taking the time to be on here. Um, Heck yeah, man. Just don't screw up. Yeah, just, uh, just don't mess pressure. this opportunity up because there's a lot of money at stake here. So and We're a highbrow <laughs> association. Dude, I got future brand deals at stake. You know how far they pull back on your social media now? I know, right? Years. Yeah, man. I better be careful not to slip any profanities in here. Exactly. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself and actually tell the viewers uh, a little bit about yourself. Because I know that if they, they see you on the streams, but they don't really know you know you. Holy moly, that's such a lot of question. Where do I begin? Um, I mean, there's... there's uh. I don't know. I, I try not to, to be too complicated. I'm just some guy, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, if you want to know, like, the specifics, uh, I'm 26, so I'm not, like, terribly old, terribly young, I guess. But um, I've had a career in sales for a long time, especially for being 26. I'm going on 10 years working on phone sales since I was 16, so quite a, quite a bit of time. Um, you know, and I've gone through quite a bit. Uh, I've already, unfortunately, lost both my parents at 26, kind of young for that. Um, so just kind of trying to make it out on my own. I've been on my own since I was 17. I got emancipated. Um, I got my first apartment when I was 17. Uh, and then I've just been kind of working um, ever since, just trying to, trying to make a living. Hashtag capitalism 2019. Good stuff. That's right, man. Listen, Raven just wanted your dating profile. That's all. No. <laughs> Damn it, Sarge. No. <laughs> Not at all. Well, well, I mean, if we ever match up on Tinder when I'm in uh, Vegas, you know, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Can't, can't say no to that. I, oh, I double R would be. I wouldn't switch like governments hard. for anything. Double R. Would be <laughs> double R out on a date. Like he'd make you pay for. The, he'd make you pay the bill. Listen, mm -hmm. listen. I, I do the driving. You pay. All right, Chris. That's that's what that's what's going to happen. If you're not, not, when you're make, not when you're making a six-figure government salary on my tax dollars. No. What are you talking about? Even top FBI agents don't make six figures, even with overtime. Make well, Chris? You know who's not making any money this year? <laughs> Montez Perfect. Oh, Dude, yeah. I bet he gets government benefits, though. That's really the good part about having a government job. You get those sweet, sweet benefits. I think, I think Montez Perfect... Deserves uh, being banned for the for the year. I think he so, should get a permanent the, ban. Wait, isn't that the guy that did the helmet to helmet? Yeah, that's the yeah. guy who's done several helmet to helmets. Yes, has he really? Kind of he has something a... I wanted to talk about too was uh, there's a mm -hmm. theory out there that I heard from a couple people on YouTube that do like football theory and stuff like that about injuries. Um, if you pay attention, the the stuff that that uh, Antonio Brown has been getting in trouble for, how he's lost control of himself and everything else, his bad decision-making. None of that happened before that cheap shot that Burfitt got on him in the playoffs that one time where it knocked him out cold, knocked him out for the first couple of games of the season the next season. So you think you think so, he's messed up mentally? Yeah, people, like, there's a theory going around that that when he took that shot to the head, it gave him symptoms of CTE, but since it's not chronic, it's not considered CTE. Like it doesn't progressively get worse, and it's just it's just a constant thing now. He has no decision making skills. He's very impulsive. He has no That's filter. He's, he's just. I don't know, man. On the contrary, I I definitely get where you're coming from, but at the same time, I mean, it really kind of seems like all that stuff in Oakland to make him out to look like a loose cannon. It definitely seems like there's a real possibility that all that was calculated. Because, I mean, if you look at it step by step unfolding, um, you know, all the wishy washiness, making a big deal out of the helmet, which, let's be honest, I mean, uh, every player has to deal with that rule, and nobody else was really making a big deal. But I know Tom Brady said something about it, but 
nobody else was really making a big deal like that. I'm, oh, I'm not going to play unless I get the helmet. And it all, and like when you look back and people say, oh, well, he hired a social media, you know, marketing person to like kind of see how he could orchestrate all that, which is why he made the YouTube video and, and the Instagram posts and stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, if you look back at it, it really does seem like a perfect series of events that could definitely have all been orchestrated just to get the Raiders to think, man, we don't have a chance of getting this guy to not be a distraction and play for us. Cause and here's my, here's the reason that I have that theory. Actually, I'm really glad you guys brought this up. Cause I'm like a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. Think about back when he was getting traded from Pittsburgh, the first place they tried to place him was Buffalo. I don't know if you remember that. And he yeah, straight he up said, him. yeah, he straight up said, um, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to show up. If you trade me to Buffalo, it's never going to happen. So they immediately, Buffalo's like, we're not dealing with that. So they immediately squashed the deal. And that's when they ended up with the Raiders. But you can't play that card twice. You know, you can't be like, well, I really want to go to the Patriots, a team the Steelers had zero chance of sending AB to. So that way he could try to get a championship. And that's why it seems like he wasn't really upset until the Patriots let him go. Now all of a sudden it's about honoring contracts and doing the right thing, but he had no problem not wanting to honor his contract and not do the right thing with Oakland. Now right. all of a sudden it's a, a moral high ground. No, so I that's, agree with that's all my conspiracy theory about it. The other thing, too, that, w- that they were saying was that the brain damage he could have gotten from that hit could have actually knocked his, his behavior back mm-hmm. to, like, teenager behavior. Fair enough. It, it but the thing is, is I'm not a scientist. His, his filters. You know, and, and everything that there seems to be about CT, it seems to be like boxing. You know, it seems to be like a – from just from everything I've read and, and stuff. So I'm no expert. I don't want to come across that way by any means. But just from everything I've studied about, because I did play football myself for, for quite a few years, um, it, it's really more like a long-term thing. You know, it takes time for the damage of multiple concussions and all that impact on the brain and stuff like that to actually affect you. So that's 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 why I just I feel like I lean towards my theory a little more. But you I mean, you could absolutely be right. But I'm no scientist. I'm no doctor. At the same time, head injuries are really weird. That's true, too. Like, I mean, you could Mm -hmm. you could fall and bust your head open. You can't count to five anymore, but you could play guitar like a madman. Yeah, exactly. Or you I know, saw like when when we were the when brain's I was at Fort just Drum, really complicated. When I was at Fort Drum, we were doing mm-hmm. uh, vehicle checks in the motor pool, and you have to wear a helmet when you're around vehicles. Well, this girl, she dropped a wrench or something, and she went to pick it up, and she barely touched the the toe panel on the the Humvee with her with her helmet, and it knocked her out cold, and she ended up going into a coma for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. And it was that was well, just the- a light hit i don't know how the hell that worked but it it did so head injuries are really weird it's hard to it's hard to narrow down what's going to happen if you take a good head injury i was reading about this interesting phenomenon uh that's currently unexplained in the medical community where these people have just like you just said sarge like mental um i wouldn't call deficiencies but ramifications uh penalties um after receiving a a major blow to the head like for instance the phenomenon i'm referring to is when people take like have really really bad head injuries they go into comas and they wake up speaking get this an entirely different language fluently or they'll speak like uh, a I've british i've heard of that you've heard yeah, of, this it's, is a, it's savant syndrome savant uh, yeah dude, that's so crazy to me like you wake up and all of a sudden you're speaking a different language or you're speaking in an accent. Like you, you'll wake up like there's Americans who have had this happen. They wake up and they, uh, they have a British accent all of a sudden. Yeah. There was this, uh, this teenage kid that got in a bike accident and busted his head and, uh, he couldn't talk anymore, but he could play anything. He could, anything he heard, he could play a piano riff of it just perfectly. That's he so bizarre. I was like, how the hell does that work? Yeah, no. I, I... Well, it's because the thing is, is like, there's like two types of, of parts of your brain, right? And from what I've learned, like there's the, the conscious part. That's like the part that you read, you write, you think. You're actively doing stuff with, with that part of your brain, your conscious. Right. But there's also a level of your brain sometimes referred to as subconscious. 
what that is 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 just your your mind processes information and retains it so fast that your conscious mind can only keep up so much that's why you know you remember certain things here or there but you know secretly just like a computer does your brain is actually intaking all that other information and storing it that's why when you see people that have things like eidetic memories just like phenomenal brain conditions Wait, what what is that I, what's able... what is the eidetic memory eidetic memory is a condition where basically it's it's more than a, a perfect memory you know how they say they have like a photographic memory you can yeah. take a picture with your mind and memorize it eidetic memory is a step further than that it's almost like uh basically a perfect memory i can recall what i ate for lunch on july 2nd 2002 Dang. something that a normal not me i'm not saying i have an eidetic memory i'm saying like if, if someone has an eidetic memory that's what they can do with perfect recollection there was a lady who had an eidetic memory and she had 10 years worth of journals to prove to people that she had this condition and experts like studied the, the journals and they quizzed her on you know what she did this day or this day or this day and they found that she did it with 100 percent accuracy and they they proved that it's actually impossible for a normal brain to be able to memorize all that information in the journals even if she made it up so wow. that she can't be lying I can't the the eidetic memory it's, too is, it's an incredible it, science the eidetic memory works a little different with different people that have it 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 only you can only remember certain fields of memories perfectly how so like, like what do you mean like it you might remember that you bought this car uh, you might remember that you, you had this toy car mm -hmm. you could na you can name what kind of car it was you can name everything about it except you'll be missing something like the color okay like you won't remember colors or something you'll remember everything else but you won't remember one thing and it's different with everybody that has it like Photographic memory, you can remember images. Like anything you see, you can remember it. But eidetic memory, you remember every detail except for like certain things. You won't remember certain things about everything you remember. And you know what? That it, it was it's weird. I actually, I, I, I think there was a podcast mm -hmm. that I was listening to where they were talking to neurosurgeons and stuff like that. And they were explaining it. It, it went way over my head, but that was what I took from it. So that begs the question then. If we are indeed capable of that, if the brain is, not that we would ever tap into that under normal circumstances, but if the brain mm -hmm. is that, um, has that kind of power to it, or potential rather, like, it, it begs the question, on a daily basis, what percent of our brain are we actually using? Oh, well, I mean, I actually heard that's a common myth. People think like, oh, we're only using 10% of our brain, 20% of our brain. But I heard that's not the way that it works. You're always using 100% of your brain. That's, the, that's not the way the brain works. It's just a matter of like um, certain parts of your brain have certain functions. You know, there's certain parts of your brain that control your ability to retain info. Certain parts of your brain that, you know, has like a memory of things that have happened to you. Certain parts that, you know, uh, trigger things when you have certain smells. Like every part of the brain has a function right. and it's so complicated and there's so many neurons sending so much information at once that even with all the technology in mankind even though we're close or people say that we're close and that they even have projected dates for when it will happen we do not yet technically have something that can be more efficient than the human brain in terms of a computer there's wow. no computer currently yet that we know about, at least the most the government one we don't know, um, that has the capability of, of matching what the human brain could do. That is how complicated that the human brain is. That's well, I mean, they're trying, they're trying to mimic that, too, with, like, biocomputers or putting, like... Oh, yeah. Biologic they're going to do it forever until computers. we get wiped out by whatever we create. What is, <laughs> what is a, a, bio, a biocomputer? They're, they're, they're trying to use, like, biological organisms to enhance computers by but i don't know how it works i just know i've heard it before it's Wait, just like regular biological like the whole it's like, robot theory like with like robots no when he says a biological he, what he's talking about is like a bio bio like a biological organism right something that lives breathes it it adapts it evolves that's what they're trying to create they're trying to create a system 
that can learn, that can teach itself, that can basically mimic life, just like a biology does. That's so that's not why what I'm they call saying, it. But that's cool too. Well, no, well, I mean, there is, but there is stuff like that. I mean, there's stuff like that now. There's a, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but um, they created that that dog, or it's like a robot dog, and it like taught itself how to walk. I saw so that, it's, and and they tried to kick it over, yeah. and it like catches itself. And it, yeah, and it knows how to keep its balance. It it taught itself that it they wrote the programming for it to be able to learn stuff. So I that's think, what my thing that's is what like I, okay. I so if you about. if you actually you're thing. right and I'm wrong. I actually just looked it up. I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. I don't I don't know what I was. I, was thinking of something. I know a lot anyway, of useless. Yeah, that that was that's right. They, <laughs> they're trying to build machines that can mimic biological materials. So exactly. Like, in, in they're that trying video, like the the Terminator's synthetic skin from the movies. They're trying to mimic that for burn victims. Oh really? With like, computers and like stuff, the they're trying to stuff? actually. Huh? What? Aluminum stuff. Yeah. You saw a robot when he sprayed his arm. They didn't even put that in a can, dude. It was. It was, <laughs> it was uh, in in the Terminator. It's it's uh, what is it? It's silic. It's a silicone based synthetic skin. So now they're trying to develop the same thing to use as like graft materials for burn victims. So they're not taking skin from one section of the body and putting it on another one. They can just manufacture skin and put it on you. Wow. Exactly. So that don't make your butt look weird. So they're trying to look. They're trying to use technology to mimic biological systems. That's insane, yep. dude. That's really cool. Like they're doing it with with hearing loss and with vision. Like blind people are trying to figure out a way to to put a computer that hooks into into your brain where your vision receptors would be, and you have to wear these glasses, and the glasses collect the images and send it to your brain, like your eyes would normally do. I hate to be that guy, but man, this is like that Arth, Archer meme. I don't know if you guys watch Archer. But it's like, do you want, you know, robots taking over? Because this is how you get robots taking over. <laughs> my thing is, I, my thing is I saw the video, <laughs> I saw the popular video that you just referenced uh, a minute ago with the robot dog and how yeah. the person walked up really blindsided the thing and kicked it and it fell to its side and it immediately recovered and got up. I'm like, okay. Isn't it freaky? I'm Isn't like, that the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, it was able to rebound that quick. Now, what if you put actual, like, uh, uh, pain sensors or an actual mind in this thing that can think for its own and react on its own? What if you piss this thing That's off? That's what they're doing. It's just not coming. And you get RoboCop. What happens? Oh, didn't you see Black Mirror? There's a Black Mirror episode about this. They put guns on those dogs in the future. Um... And then People they have been telling me to watch that show. I have not gotten around to it. I haven't watched oh, it either. It's so good. I heard it's, it's a so, knock it's like, off Twilight Zone. No, it's it's more complicated than that. It's it's like um, it's like the tone of the Twilight Zone, but focused around technology. Well, this got way off course from the original conversation. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, we're keeping well, it interesting. Uh, we're I talking... don't really want to spend the whole time talking about Antonio Brown's looking butt, anyways. <laughs> He's what? Whatever, dude. <laughs> I'm not talking about his was, butt. I'm talking about his head injury. But no, anyway. I know, but I'm just the saying guy, the guys in that's what case. He's, it's what the kids say, but they say ASS. Looking at ASS. I didn't want to but, um, on the podcast. I'm trying to be good. So Burfix out for the season. I think he should be banned from the league. I think so too. Um, rules are designed to be followed, and uh, I and don't if, think he will I, be until another violation. I think if you, if you look at the hits that he's been suspended and fined for yeah they are almost always on a receiver that is already down yeah and not looking in his direction yeah but i what i'm saying is that this is his this is his this is your last chance call and he will be suspended he will get probably a ban an indefinite ban if there's another hit like this uh, but I don't think he's going to be banned until there's another one. Well, I think the rest of his career. Care, the season's over I think, me, man. I think the rest of his career lies in over. lies in the Raiders because he has no trade value anymore. Nobody wants well, to bring that kind of liability want somebody on somebody that if they mess up once, they're never going to play again. Yeah, but but I think. You know, it's going to be tough because, you know, I know there's helmet-to-helmet helmet hits, and his are vicious and dirty, right? But 
if there's a time where he's going down to make a hit and the receiver lowers his helmet, and I'm not saying that this was because it wasn't, but and he does do a helmet to helmet incidental. I mean, do you do you ban the guy when he was trying to make a you know? So it's going to be a slippery slope with him, yeah. No, I mean the reason that he's suspended for the year is because it was a malicious hit. Oh no, no, I, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying, you know, in the future, if you're putting him on pretty much behavioral, he's saying if he gets if he tackles like that one once again, what's going to happen? That's what he's saying. Yeah, but how many exactly. times has he done this though? It's like been three, right? a handful. It's, he's he's been punished for like at least four times in the past six years. Holy moly, one of my neighbors is yelling. Whoa, yikes, that's so loud. I'm sorry. You guys can hear that. But um, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I don't know how many chances you're going to get. It seems like this isn't really a problem for most people. Like, they say don't do this. Nobody really, like, does this. He does this. They say don't do it again. He does it again. They say don't do it again. He does it again. Where does it end? I mean, I think it's just time to call it quits at this point. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's almost like you you talk about league bans, right? It's one of those things where it's like, if you got to ask, right? It's it's probably something that needs to be banned. That's true. Because, I mean, how many how many conversations do we have every time somebody gets suspended? Oh, but should we ban them? Like, never. But we're having well, this I mean, conversation because it's even in question because, like, you probably should be banned. When, when, this point. when uh, James Harrison was getting in trouble for it, Oh, I remember It was that. right after the rule was placed in. Yep. And to be honest, the rule was put there because James Harrison liked to hit people in the head. <laughs> Let's be clear yeah, here. Why are most rules rules? Because some players somewhere along the line tried to do something that put yeah. people's safety at risk. Look at the Raiders in the 80s. How many rules exist because of the Raiders in the 80s? Well, the you can't fumble forward rule was, <laughs> was in there because of the Raiders. So I'm just yeah, saying, you can't like, intentionally fumble. Well, the uh, that lowering the crown of the helmet rule is in because of Ryan Shazier, you know. It's true. Yep. And that's to and, protect the person doing the tackling. And that was a questionable hit he made, but he wound up hurting himself. Well, it wasn't a questionable hit. It was questionable the the way that he went. the 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 hit was a good hit. It was just a bad form to hit because it ended up hurt, causing him more damage than if he'd have done just a regular shot, a regular tackle. Yeah, that wasn't to perfect. That wasn't to protect the offense. That was to protect the person doing the hitting. Oh, I know. I I, I think having those rules in place and having um, a commission designed to go after players who don't follow those rules is a good idea. I mean, I I will I will say that we're probably a much softer league, if you want to use that term, than maybe, say, 10, 15 years ago, back when Ray Lewis and Erlacher were playing. But and it's gonna get worse. This, this is also alleviating a lot of, like, unnecessary injuries. Like, I'll never forget the – I forget what year it was, but um, <clears throat> Anquan Bolden, he was a cardinal. He goes to catch a ball in the end zone and gets absolutely walloped by Jim Leonard um, – Long story short, uh, Anquan Bolden ends up like shattering every bone in his face. Um, I, I just, I, I don't, I never was a big fan of the uh, helmet to helmet, and you know, just like, just like probably many of you guys who are listening to this podcast, um, I also played football in high school, and I, you know, I, I've experienced what the helmet to helmet hit feels like, and it's not anything nice. Um, yeah, it's no fun. <laughs> it's no fun. I mean, it's <laughs> it's as close it's to like being headbutt. It's as close to being in a car accident. It is much worse than getting a headbutt. <laughs> yes, much worse. <laughs> it's essentially a car accident every hit. You know. Um, I got headbutt really bad. Well, well, I mean, they've they've done well. impact studies where you're absolute, where that's absolutely true. Where you take as much force from a head to head collision as you would from a car accident. Right. Which is, it, it's my opinion that I think that soon the next thing to go as as the league continues to adapt and 
kind of like preserve their players from unnecessary injuries. I think we're going to see a, a total elimination of um, of uh, kick kickoffs. I don't think uh, kickoffs will be a thing anytime soon. And soon thereafter, I think they're going to take somehow implement a system to remove punt returns as well. Then you know, let's just put them in pink tutus with their team logo. Hey, on you know, and put flags on them. You know, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I'm just, I can see the writing on the wall, and I I'm can not see disagreeing. How... I just, I just think at a certain point, you know, if we're gonna, I mean, you know, if everybody's gonna always start at the twenty, there's no variety. You know, that's one of the great things about the game now is, you know, okay, we're down. We're down by four, you know, we get a great kickoff return, you know, maybe to the 35, we only have to go 65 yards versus, right. you know, and they've got to come up with some way that you don't always start at the 20 and have to go 80 yards. And it affects the clock management, affects that, it, you know, and, yeah, it's just that special teams. They're, they're the most, uh, you know, risky yeah. plays if you're a player. I mean, that's. And they'll come up with something stupid, too. Like, you know, your quarterback will throw the ball from the. And wherever it hits is where the other team's going to take possession, you know? Yeah, and I agree. It's going to be stupid. And then. And then I've read for like the onside kick, it's like a fourth and what, 15 or fourth and 17. I've heard some more variation of that. Well, the problem is, is if you do that, the other team knows you're doing it. Yeah. Where on an onside kick, there's the element of surprise. You know, I'm down, I'm down seven with four minutes left. Do I kick off and trust my defense? Do I do an onside kick? And, uh, because my defense sucks. Because we have moron dipshit clown. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I oh, think man. I think the changes are are a good thing for the longevity of the league. Um, you call it I being don't. sissified or becoming too soft. Um, yep, exactly. Let's just call it the Snowflake Football League (SFL). No, I. I'm all about trying to protect the player's health because I like watching football and I don't like seeing everyone get hurt. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It seems like that seems like a waste of talent. I like watching football. I don't want to I don't want to have to watch a bunch of people in wheelchairs trying to play football. I mean, the thing about it is is like when it comes down to like the football stuff, I mean I know people want to see an exciting game. I, I do too. More I mean it's just as much as the next guy might say more than anybody, but just as much as the next guy. I mean I really want to see an exciting game too. I mean, how many times a punt or kickoff return are exciting? I mean, it's so rare. If it's gonna make it way, way better for the players, I'm okay with that. I mean, obviously drastically altering the game is not something I'm in favor of. I know it's kinda of, gonna to be tough if everyone has to start from the same place all the time and you know, it changes a lot of the game. You do have to, you know, work with it, but I mean, it doesn't like, in my opinion, my personal opinion, I don't know if it really changes like the entertainment factor of football. And I know a lot of people say like, oh, well, these guys are millionaires. And, you know, I mean, not everyone is, by the way. I mean, some some of these players aren't making, you know, top dollar. But, What's the league minimum? You know, like 120,000? 450,000. 450, so half a million. Which by, by all means, that's nothing to sneeze at. But in terms of like putting your body at risk every single day, you go to work and practice every single day. You go to work and play a game um, for half a million dollars. I mean, that's nice and all, but what's half a million dollars if you can't even, if you, you can't know, tie your go to the bathroom? You know, if you can't walk, if you can't go to the bathroom by yourself, if you can't enjoy your life, what's all that money good for? It's just nothing. For half so, a million dollars, I'll lay down in front of a Mack truck. Um, well, people say that they'll do a lot do of things for that kind of money, but, I mean, at the end of the day, like, <laughs> you know, I think I'd probably flinch once the wheels got within, you know, 15 feet of me. <laughs> There's a movie um, called The Beast. It's about Russia taking going into Afghanistan. Yeah. And this tank crew gets, gets separated from its unit. 
and uh, they start going crazy because they're lost, and they just they're they're in this village, and they're trying to question the villagers. Um, so they get the the head of the village, and they lay him down in front of this tank, with his feet under the tread, and just slowly run him over until he starts talking. Wow. Would you do that for five hundred thousand dollars? I would not. No, that that was a joke, by the way. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't put myself in a situation where I would have a hundred percent chance of dying to earn right? some unattainable we'll money. A one hundred percent chance. Yeah. Let's give First Fight a real punishment, man. Let's just make him watch at the beginning of every game that hit with JJ or Juju Smith Schuster. Laying him out. I got an uh, even worse you, punishment than that. How about well, we make him watch baseball? Make him sit exactly sit down and watch a, a baseball game or two. And that's the other thing about football is compared to like other professional sports players in baseball and basketball, obviously because there's considerably less players. And baseball's not um, fair. fair enough. Wrong. But uh, but but the thing is, is like those players, like I mean, you cannot argue that they're taking the same risks football players are, and they're they're generally, on average, getting paid much more. Right. So, I mean, making the game safer seems like, I don't know, seems pretty fair. Well, I don't know. I, in the last three years, there have been a handful of players who have been hit in the face with a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. So, I, I, I But how often does that, that happen, as opposed to, exactly. like, a vicious tackle? Well, and that's not guaranteed happens. to happen. You're guaranteed to be put in bodily danger at some point as a football player. You're guaranteed that. No, I get it. I'm just saying that baseball. Is well, then if you get it, rare. Chris, you should know it's not a fair comparison. Exactly. Chris. It's, it's rare, but when Jesus you Christ, it, Chris. I see why this is two and a half cent podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Let's go. Yeah, so, let's go. So, so Nick, we uh, I kind of uh, touched base with you uh, when I was inviting you over to the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. And I kind of ran this topic past you uh, just to make sure, because I know it's kind of a sensitive topic, but the, the topic of uh, your weight. I know you're a pretty big dude, or you were a pretty big dude, right? You were, how much did you use, used to weigh? Still am. Bro, you said you wouldn't bring this up. I know, right? <laughs> Just kidding, everybody. You told me it was, it, it was okay. Um, yeah, actually, I really like talking about my weight, honestly. Because the thing is, is like, um, it's the first thing people bring up if they're losing they an argument you? against me, which, which I really enjoy, personally. Because I attribute it to, it's like that scene in, in, the Bat, in Dark Knight, where Batman's punching Joker over and over again in the face. And, and he's just laughing. Like, you have... You have nothing. Like, that's that's how I feel every time somebody brings up my weight. So it's actually really funny. It's like, you have nothing to threaten me with. It's good stuff. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I used to be quite a bit. I mentioned actually earlier that my uh, parents passed away. I only mentioned that as, like, a, a big part about me because it's, it, I mean, it just is just because it's, you know, trying to make it on my own from the, almost the beginning. And, you know, it's not something a lot of people deal with. So it yeah. just kind of, you know, makes you know kind of made me who i am but um when my my dad had passed away i was 21 he was um he he died from liver disease and um when i was 22 or so so like a like a little bit more than a year and two months later my mom got diagnosed with lung cancer and i was living Mm. in uh, lompoc california uh with my girlfriend at the time we were we were actually you know supposed to get married um you know it was a really serious relationship we'd been dating for three years, living together for one. Uh, so when my mom passed away, a lot of things from that changed because I became incredibly depressed. Right. I was uh, already a, a really heavy guy in, uh, in high school. Um, I was already at about 400 pounds or so when I left high school. Um, so, it, you know, I mean, you always know when people leave high school, it's like it, it only goes down from there usually. So, I mean, the same thing's true for, for me. It, it just went down from there. And then when my mom passed away, I was living in Lompoc. I was working from home for a company in Orange County. So there's really just no reason to leave. So I was just sitting at home consuming just God knows how many calories. 
And until it got to the point where, because my, you know, my mom had finally passed away, I was just super depressed. Um, and my girlfriend, you know, she was younger than me. Um, so now I'm only 20, 22, 23 at this point. You know, she's 20, 19. So neither of us are emotionally equipped to handle what's going on uh, it, by any means. So I'm, I'm basically almost eating myself to death, you know, just to call it what it is. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I ate my way up to 636 pounds. Wow. And wow. Um, I came back from Lompoc because my girlfriend at that point, well, she know, she'd always known me. I, I was always heavy. So it was never like, oh, well, it's a big surprise that Nick's heavy. But it was more like it. it's a big surprise that Nick just doesn't care about living anymore which is just where I was at, which is an unfortunate place to be. But when that many bad things happen to you in such a short amount of time at such a young age, it really does have a very significant negative impact. Absolutely. So, think, yeah, yeah, you, you can imagine, I, I'm yeah. sure. But I was sitting at work one day. I had moved back. We had broken up. It, it had fallen apart. She's like, you know, at this point, I don't want to come home one day and you're on the couch and you're not breathing. I can't do this anymore. You know, you're not willing to change. She wasn't willing to help me, you know, so it just broke up. So it just made me more depressed. But I finally went back uh, to Orange County, um, stayed with my family for a little bit, and they were just obviously very concerned about me because I'd already been heavy my whole life, 400 pounds. And now I'm 250 pounds more than they're used to. So it's like they're super concerned. And I'm at work. I Rightfully can't even so, breathe. I mean. No, of course. Yeah, and by all means, it's a, those conversations, like, you have to have them. I know a lot of times people sit down like, oh, I really care about your health, and they just want to talk about why I'm as heavy as I am. They don't really care, but, you know, at that point, you know, they really did. People really did care when they were talking to me about it. But, um, you know, I, I was at work, and I, I couldn't breathe, and my chest was hurting, and, and I, I was just like, I, I got to go to the hospital. And I went to the hospital, and they had, like, a, a come-to-Jesus moment with me, if you will, and, and it was like, I don't even know. They must have pulled their like half their their shift staff that that shift because there was like seven or eight people around my bed, um, and they were all doctors and nurses. None of them were like a nobody in the hospital. Right. Pure yeah. doctors and nurses around my bed, and they were like, "Look, dude, and like we're having this conversation because you're super lucky. If you come back, we're not going to be having this conversation. We're not going to be able to have a conversation." So that's basically they they gave me the hard facts of it. And it just laying in that bed, and I was in the hospital. For, they hospitalized me for a week. They had to draw blood for me. Uh, something was wrong with, with my blood levels on something. So they had to keep giving me medicine. Um, and they had to keep drawing blood every four hours. And I got to tell you, when you're as heavy as I am, and it's incredibly hard for somebody to find a vein, and somebody has to draw blood from you every four hours for a week. I've yeah, heard... you... you I've heard about uh, the mm -hmm. horrors of, um, you know, drawing blood and how difficult it is. It, it could be on like heavy people. My mom is a uh, is a nurse, mm -hmm. so you know I've heard a lot of these same stories. That, so I 100% understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Well, it's to the point where I'm on like day five, and I'm like, get away from me! Don't touch me with that thing. Like they had to keep scheduling it a little bit more than four hours out because I wasn't even emotionally equipped to handle like just getting poked all the time so i just i sat on that bed and i was just like we're, we're not doing this anymore i'm tired of this i'm tired of people looking at me like i'm some freak i'm tired of people always having something to say about me i'm tired of not being able to to tie my shoes without being out of breath and walk up one step without being out of breath and yeah. walk down the block without sweating like yeah. i just said i'm i'm sick well, of that, it. that's pretty much so, chris right now <laughs> Oh, kiss my ass. You're just as fucking... <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. How about the Mertzkins? But, um, but, yeah, no, I mean, after that, I, I just, like, was, you know, I'm, I'm done with it. And uh, I took two years, uh, the last two years, really, if you will, because I'm 26 now. Um, I, I took those, those, uh, those last two years, and almost three now, and uh, I just really got to work on um, cutting out all the calories um, I started drinking meal replacement shakes, so for two out of three of my meals. So I would drink most of my meals. I would swim all the time, like, um, I mean, at, at least four to five days a week. I got to the point where I could swim five miles without stopping. I still can. Um, and eventually I, I got to the point where I'm now at around 350. So I've lost. Wow, that's awesome. Pretty good. I've lost, I've lost a lot. I've lost a lot.
That's really good. I was I was the opposite. I was in shape when I was a kid. I was in shape all. I got out of the. I don't have to run anymore. Right, uh, but, exactly. I, but so I did funny. not change my diet, so now I'm oh. pretty big. Yeah, it happens, man. I'm 200. Yeah, I was, I've lost 280 pounds, and I tell people that, and they're like, "Holy moly, you've lost two of me or three of me." So, um, what do you do for meals now? I mean, do you do you have a cheat mainly. day here and there, or how does that work? I mean, the thing is, is like I, I try not to do cheat days, cheat, you know, because cheat cheat days turn into cheat a couple days which turn into a cheat week um if i cheat it's gonna be on a meal and it's gonna be a specific reason and it's never gonna be insane because the thing is is that's why most people fail in their weight loss that's really if you want to change if you're if you're struggling with your right weight now and you're listening to this and you want to change you know whatever it is you need to change in order to to lose the weight the the most important thing to remember is the bad habits that you had, I mean, because let's be honest, it's it's almost always because of bad habits. I mean, it, it is because of medical yeah. conditions sometimes, but and it never was for me. They were always honest with me. I went to the doctor. They said, you don't have thyroid issues. You don't have metabolism issues. You're just making bad choices. You're making poor choices. You're never going outside. You're never getting exercise. You're eating thousands of calories. You're eating bad food no, with no nutritional value, fast food, junk food, bread. So, I mean... Uh, you, you have to realize that there's no diet, right, that's going to help you. There's no diet. There's no plan. Because when you say, I'm going to go on a diet, you say, I'm going to make a plan about it. What you're really saying is that there's an end date and you're going to go back to the, excuse my French, shitty habits that got you there in the first place. And you can't yep. do that. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful. That's why people emphasize the phrase lifestyle change. And that had to really at home with me before I could see any type of results that something had to click where it's like, you cannot do this. Like, this is not okay. Sitting down and eating an entire pizza is not okay. Sitting down and just, you know, gorging and splurging and drinking 3000 calories and all these sodas and these energy drinks and, and all that stuff. It's, you cannot do that because no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you, you go in the gym, you could spend two to three hours a day there, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But no matter how hard you work, you cannot outwork a bad diet. It's proven. You cannot. You can outwork a bad meal or a bad decision here or there. You have a candy bar or you do this or that, but you cannot work a bad diet. So that's why I just don't, I don't live like I used to. I don't really take in sugar. If I drink an energy drink, it's always 100% sugar-free, no carbs. If I, you know, and that's very rarely, I almost always just drink water. I don't eat bread. I don't eat carbs. You don't I don't eat, eat so sugar. You've completely eliminated carbs from your diet? Yeah. I, 100%? Uh, essentially, essentially almost 100% elimination. The only reason I say almost 100% is because it's kind of hard to to not, you know, not you deliberately like miss stuff. Because there's carbs and fruits and stuff. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there's... There's there's a thing called there there really is a thing called good carbs and bad carbs. So essentially, I've eliminated all deliberately bad carbs. So I don't I don't eat pasta. I don't eat bread. I don't eat sugar. I don't eat fast food. I don't eat junk food. Wait a second. Um, no fast food. None of that. No. Well, you can't. I mean, you you literally can't unless you're ordering a salad everywhere you go. That's the only thing that would literally be acceptable on on most fast food menus. And almost all of it has bread, and almost all of it has carbs. It's loaded with fats, sugars. There's nothing nutritional in that stuff because they have to ship it across the country and make it for you within seconds. There's nothing that your body needs or wants that's in McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or Chick-fil-A or any of that stuff. I beg to differ. My body loves (laughs) Whoppers. Yeah. (laughs) And those... And and that scale loves high numbers. It's, that's how it works. And I feel it. I feel it, dude. I've struggled we with them more than anyone you know. I bear. The scale can like what it wants. I like what I like. That's fair enough. Listen that's, here, no, scale. I feel it. I feel Listen it. Here, it's, a, it's a big problem. Today. It's a big problem. I got what I wanted. <laughs> and it's dude. a sensitive topic. And I'll tell you why it's a sensitive topic for people. Because when you are this heavy, there's no escaping. We know we're this heavy. 
Like there's no need to to talk to us about it or remind us or tell us. There's oh, yeah. no part of your life, especially when you get to 630 pounds, that is not adversely affected. Like I, I couldn't even walk around a grocery store. If someone had said, we need to go grocery shopping, I would have had to wait in the car. That's how embarrassing it is. And this was you at so, 630. This was me at 630, yeah. I can't even walk around Walmart. If you ask me to do a lap around Walmart, forget it. Because really? my back hurts, my ankles hurts. I can't do anything. I can barely breathe. I can barely move. I can barely walk. I can barely do anything. 630 pounds. Yeah, man. So that's why I always tell people, if you have health goals, if you have fitness goals, weight loss goals, like if I can do it with everything yeah. that I was struggling with and everything I went through, literally anybody can do and it. And I'm glad we're talking fine. about this because this is going to provide some mm -hmm. form of encouragement. I mean, um, there's a lot of people who are stuck in a funk like that where they feel like they're not getting mm -hmm. results. And maybe it is because of what you just said. They, they're doing the time in the gym, but um, they're not uh, supplementing their their uh, workout with a, mm. a, an appropriate diet, you know? Yeah, Chris. A lot of people don't even understand that even if they didn't lift a finger to work out, if they simply drastically change their diet, they would immediately lose weight just because they're putting a lot better stuff into their body than their body's yeah. used to getting. Yeah. And it's not that hard. Literally, anyone who says, I can't do it, or it's, it's too hard, or it's too difficult, it's not. You know what's too hard is looking at a bank statement and seeing in a 30-day period, you know, 40 charges from restaurants. That means you're averaging more than a meal out. And I know people that do that. I know people that spend 10 to $15 a meal that buy 40 meals a month, you know, even at only $12 on an average, you know, even at only you know, $20 a month, that's $240. That's two months worth of food for me. You so know what really what... make you stop eating fast food? Have kids. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you can't be spending money like that on food. If you I, went, I went from you can't. You know, a $10 bill at Burger King to a $30 bill at Burger King. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And it's not it's... even like that anymore. With inflation, like, you can barely go places and get a, a decent meal for 10 bucks. Unless you're ordering off the dollar menu. But if you get a combo with a medium drink, forget it. With taxes, it's almost always going to be over 10. So it's just, it's hopefully it's helpful advice because it's literally as simple. Right now, I have my meal prep for the next three days going right now as we're talking. It's cooking right now. Literally, I all I did was I have, um, I, I got some like uh, healthy teriyaki sauce, like an alternative to it. It's like kind of got the same flavor, but a lot less sodium and sugar and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I have the, I based it in, in chicken for like a, an hour in the fridge. So it's going to taste super good. Um, it's cooking in the crock pot for the next six hours. I'm going to throw in some, uh, some eggplant. I'm going to throw in some, uh, some broccoli. It's all cut up and ready to go. And then, you know, first thing tomorrow, I'll be able to package it in, you know, five, six different packages. And boom, I got lunch and dinner for the next three days, and the whole and meal cost so, me so like you're, eight bucks. So you're not only uh, eating more nutritionally sound food, but you're also saving mm -hmm. money by um, by not eating out every single day or multiple and, times yeah. a day. And eating better tasting food than the crap. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not eating better tasting much. food, better quality food, lower pricing food, and it's going to make you feel better because people forget. People forget how important nutrition is. They say it's 80% nutrition, 20% what you do in the gym. And they also say abs are made in the kitchen. All those sayings, they come from how important nutrition is. People forget that every single thing you put into your body, your body's going to take it and it's going to use it to rebuild itself. So it, yeah. that's why they say you are what you eat. You're, you're stuffing yourself with, you know, McChicken nuggets. You know, that's what your body's using to rebuild all that junk, all that processed food all those preservatives and stuff that your body has, has a tough time dealing with, that's what it's processing every single time you have one of those meals. Um, so you, you're, you're, you're literally paying a premium to die faster. Yeah. That's what it is. If we don't deal with the, the reality that nutrition and health are direct you know, results to our, our mortality, then we're, we're not really focused at what's on stake here it's not going to motivate us to make the right decisions that we need to make to, to live our best lives and, and be healthy and feel good and make those right choices. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think everybody has a day where, you know, you're in a rush and you stop mm-hmm. into McDonald's and of course. Uh, and yeah, but you he's get a cheeseburger, but as a but that uh, what you're saying is make that the rare exception versus the rule where some people, you know, I don't want to cook so I'm going to stop at Chick-fil-A tonight. They do that probably 3 times a week and they're eating all that and Chick-fil-A yeah. is it's tasty, but it's not what your body needs. Exactly. And that chick, all the chicken in there, people are like, okay, they look at it this way. Oh, I'm having a chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. I have a grilled chicken sandwich. Okay, boom. I had a good meal for myself. No, you didn't. Because I guarantee you probably got the fries. I can almost guarantee you probably got the drink. Right there, boom. That's a ton of calories. Those potatoes, nothing in there your body needs or wants. The The soda... Nothing in there your body needs or wants. And carbonation expands your stomach. So anytime you put a carbonated beverage in your body, you're basically creating more space for your body to want more food. So Dude, it's, after hearing it's that, never, I, I never want to drink another soda. It's never a good idea to drink anything that's carbonated. Oh, you're not it's not good for you. Beer. Beer's carbonated. <laughs> well, beer's, beer's its own problem because beer's the same thing like bread. This is what someone had to tell me to get me to stop this stuff. I'm telling you. Someone had to sit there and explain the science of this. When when yeast, when bread, when flour, when carbs, when that stuff goes into your body, it literally turns into sugar. So if you put yep. sugar in your body and if you put bread in your body, your body is getting the same thing. Therefore, it's getting the same results. So that's why bread is so important to stay away from. And it took me a long time to give up bread. I love bread, man. Me I love too. garlic bread. I love sandwiches. Um, that, I love all of that that's stuff. That's why I had questioned you when you said you eliminated mostly carbs. I'm like, I, I immediately mm-hmm. got thinking like, dude, what if I did that? I would have nothing left to eat. I basically eat meats, meat and vegetables. And usually it's mostly chicken. It's mostly white meat. But I do eat beef. I do eat red beef, red meat. Um, oh, I also do not do not take in dairy. I do I do cheese, but no milk, butter, all that stuff is it's pretty garbage too. You don't really need any. Of no that. butter. So you like can... if if they're doing burgers, do you at like a cookout you're at? Do you just have the burger without a bun? Yeah, it's stuff like that. Small changes like that. And if you're grilling a burger, it it's not like terrible for you compared to a lot of things because the fat, the grease, it's dripping into the grill. So you're left with just basically yeah. the meat, which is like the protein, and that's what your body uses. Protein blocks are what your body uses to rebuild itself in a healthy way. That's why protein is so important. And you can buy, you know, 93.7 ground beef and make good burgers. And yeah. not really, and it, you know, if you serve uh, 80.20 ground beef or 93.7 ground beef burger, you really don't taste the difference. In my opinion. Yeah, and, and the reality is, is like, I mean, like, I, I, all the changes, all the changes that I'm talking about, like, they're so doable. Anybody that throws an excuse at me, I'm not going to let them, I'm not going to let them give it to me. If they say, oh, excuse me, well, you know, it's a money issue, there's no way you can explain to me that it's a money issue, because this is the most affordable way to eat. Well, it's a time issue. It takes me five minutes to, to make meals for three days. How is it a time issue? Like, it, everything's cooking without me. I don't need to do anything. All I did was put it in a bag with the sauce, let it just, sit there just for to, an hour, just and to, then toss it in the crock pot. Nick, let me play devil's advocate here. Uh, Please, just, I'd love it. Do it. So, I like a variety, and I, I'm the type where if I eat the same thing over and over again, I get sick of it, and I just abandon it. Okay. What do you, how don't you get sick of eating the same foods every day? Absolutely not. You don't have to eat the same foods every day. It sounds See, the like thing you, is, you're eating the same foods every day. Well, you have to you have to realize it this way, right? What isn't the same, if you will, right? I mean, everybody in in the end, you're you're only left with a couple of components, right? You have you know vegetables and fruits. You have breads and grains. You have meats. So I mean. Everybody technically always eats the same thing, but why does it not feel like we're always eating the same thing? It's because we use different seasonings, we use different, you know, sauces, basings, different, um, 
uh, methods of pre preparation. So that way we get different results. Like um, this, this is the thing I'm making now. Um, it's like a, a basically an alternative to teriyaki, like beef, beef and, and broccoli, like beef broccoli. It's basically chicken broccoli. So it's, it's like an alternative to that. So I'm getting that kind of flavor. But, um, you know, just, uh, just the last thing I made was the same thing. It was still chicken. But instead of teriyaki, I used enchilada sauce. And then um, what I put into it was an onion and black olives. So that way, it's almost like an enchilada without the tortillas. So now it's like a completely different meal. And the meal before that, I wanted to treat myself. I had been really good. So I made myself ribs in the crock pot. So it was just ribs. So, I mean, the thing is, is like just because you're trying to eat better, you're putting better stuff into your into your body doesn't mean it has to be, you know, single tone, one note, monotonous. You can get really creative with it, even if you're only using three types of meats like, you know, chicken, fish and, and beef or yeah. even, um, you know, uh, pork. Even if you're using just four types of meat or three types of meat. Um, just the different types of creativeness. You, I mean, your imagination is literally the limit. If you have any problems like coming up with stuff, um, I, I recommend, highly recommend YouTube. Um, there's a lot of great videos out there. If you put, you know, easy crock pot recipes or cool crock pot recipes, or they have things like the pressure cooker, um, you could bake stuff. I mean, there's so many different options. It's almost like, why would you go to fast food? Because you're paying more money, you're getting less quality, and in my opinion, it's more monotonous than what I eat. I'm eating something different every uh, every three days or so. I can't remember the last time I had teriyaki chicken. So, you know, that's why it's, it's important to know that, um, you know, you don't want to put predispositions on yourself, limitations on yourself. You know, I guarantee most people, if they just gave it a shot for 30 days, give themselves like a 30-day challenge, I'm going to stick with it for 30 days. In that 30 days, it would just become a habit and they would just want to keep doing it because they're going to have more money. They're going to feel better. They're going to eat better. They're going to love it, man. I'm telling you. Anybody who actually takes my advice, um, I mean, it's completely changed my life. If you look at pictures of me before and now, I mean, if people have seen me before and now and know me, like um, they, they will tell you I'm a completely different person. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean... Uh... It's, it's nice to hear success stories like that. I mean, um, it's hard to implement or it's the hardest part I think is starting, but once you do, I think it sounds like, sounds like it could go well. well um, what about Jared? Didn't he get all his food from Subway and lose well, a million pounds? Well, Jared couldn't keep his hands <laughs> off a little kid. And then he touched little kids. Um, that's a bad example. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, uh, I think we would be remiss. I think, I think we would be remiss if we didn't, uh, go through let's just really quickly rapid fire go through the week um the week five i think picks yeah week five week five yeah because this is something that people are listening to on a weekly basis so rapid fire um nick you're welcome to join us and, and please do uh, we're not going to take turns or anything just say it out who do you think wins la rams at the seattle seahawks rams 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 I'm taking the Seahawks at home. <laughs> Jacksonville at Carolina. Carolina. Jacksonville. I'm taking Jacksonville. A Minshew mania, baby. Uh, I'm going to say Jacksonville, yeah. Uh, Buffalo at Tennessee. Buffalo. Buffalo. I'm taking Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. You're nuts. Buffalo did give New England a pretty good run for their money last week, but uh, now nah, I'm taking Tennessee at home. And that's the only game they've lost. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They were undefeated prior to that game. You're right. Next game, New England at uh, Washington. New England. 55 to 3 <laughs> because there's more on Dipchick, Clown Ass, Minuski. I think I'm taking the New England Patriots as well. New uh, England all day. Baltimore at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Dude, uh, I, if Pittsburgh. you would ask me before last Sunday, I, I would have non hesitatedly said Baltimore. But after that performance. By the way, thanks for losing my uh, fantasy pick. Uh, Ravens defense, you're the worst. <laughs> Nick Chubb is is not nearly as good as you made him look. So know, right? you fail, fail. Um, I, I'm going to go with the Ravens anyways, though. I think they bounce back this week. I do too. I don't think Lamar can throw, so. 
Okay, so uh, me and Nick are on, on the Ravens. Uh, Arizona, oh baby. my goodness, Arizona 0-3-1. At the, uh, thanks to the Steelers, the winless Cincinnati Bengals. Arizona. That's tough. Arizona. I say Bengals get their first win. I- I'm taking Arizona. I'm sorry. You guys are going to regret this. <laughs> Minnesota at the Giants. Minnesota. I'm, ta- I'm, t- I'm t- I also, I also say Giants back bounce back this week. Yeah, I'm taking the Giants at home. The Jets, the winless Jets at the Eagles. Eagles. Eagles all day. Same. Eagles. Jets. All right, we're all on the Eagles. The three and one Chicago Bears at the two and two Oakland Raiders. Bears. That's tough. There's... You know what? I'm gonna go risky reels on this, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick uh, Fortnite reference, by the way. Sorry, I'm gonna pick Raiders. I'm gonna go Raiders. I'm gonna take the Bears away. Uh, the two and two Tampa Bay. By the way, they beat the Rams last week. That was my lock of the week. Shout out to the to the Tampa Bay Bucks. The two and two Tampa handedly. I know Tampa. No Bay shout Bucks. out to the Pants Tampa Bay. I dropped Jameis Winston because you were <laughs> trash weeks one and two, son. Tampa Bay at sure. New, at New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. I'm taking New Orleans I, I as well. I don't see Tampa Bay keeping this up, man. I don't think they can I'm do gonna it. I'm going to join the – is it at New Orleans? Yes. All right, then I'll pick the Saints, but it's not going to be by much. It's going to be close, and it's okay. probably going to be a shootout. Is Breeze back for this game, though? I don't believe so. Then actually, no, never mind. I'm taking uh, the other team. <laughs> I don't even remember who it was. You're taking Tampa Bay? <laughs> <laughs> Tampa Bay. I'm taking Tampa Bay because okay. the the Saints don't really seem to have it together. Even with Kamara, man, they don't seem to have it together right now. I have Kamara in my fantasy That's fair. Team, so I should know. And they just barely eked out a win over Dallas, so that was interesting. Dallas, has been Dallas didn't even put up a fight. Yeah. All right. Uh, one and three Atlanta Falcons at the two and two Houston Texans. Houston. Same. Houston. Honestly, I think same. Atlanta wins. Really? I'm going to go with Atlanta. I okay. think Dan Quinn will be fired before the season's over. Oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> the winless. You want to fire everybody. Please. The winless Denver Broncos at the 2-2 two two LA Chargers. Chargers because Flacco sucks. 100%. Chargers. Yeah. Fangio will be a one and done. I'm taking Chargers, the Chargers. Man, have you... Dude, have you seen Rivers' chemistry with both Eckler and uh, oh, it's Keenan fantastic. Allen lately? Fantastic. Jeez, man. They're such a powerhouse. Right yeah. Now. I'm ta- and in fact, I'm taking the Chargers for that reason alone, not because Flacco sucks, Sarge. Flacco sucks. Um, the Denver battle, has fallen off so, pretty hard. So the battle of the three and ones, Green Bay at Dallas. Uh, that's tough, man, because both teams have not been that great, but they somehow haven't lost that much. So... I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go for it, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say Green Bay because I don't like you, Dallas. I'm sorry. I'm biased. I've got to take. Um, I'm gonna take Dallas. You would. I would have to. I think take, they're a better team. Um, I have to they take Dallas are. because monotonous Matt can't make oh, half time adjustment. <laughs> this guy <laughs> is like Donald Trump. He's got if, a nickname I know, for everybody. Dude. Yeah. Monotonous, monotonous Matt. Matt. Dude. I've heard it all. Dude, now. I think Chris works for Donald Trump. I think Chris is Donald Trump's speechwriter. I think so. I think I'm taking Green Bay in this match. Um, I I think uh, they can go into Dallas and take care of business. Uh, Sunday night football game, Indianapolis mm. two and two. The Colts go into Kansas City to play the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs uh, by eleven. Chiefs no, by Chiefs, Chiefs by, by the game. <laughs> You're saying Chiefs. Colts? Colts versus Chiefs? Colts yeah, and the Chiefs. Colts yes. Are get wrecked. I think the Colts get to the yeah, parking lot. Chiefs are going to get destroyed, man. If they had Andrew Luck, still they might not, but they're definitely getting destroyed. Okay. I don't believe you. Bold statement. But, but uh, see I'm, how I'm, out I'm, I'm taking the Chiefs for sure on <laughs> Sunday night. That's probably going to be my lock, lock of, the of the week. week. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's definitely uh, lock of the week. And then Monday night football matchup. Ask me five years ago, or not even five. Give me like a one year ago, and I'd be like, really? yeah, this game is going to suck. But it might actually be a good one. The two and two Cleveland Browns face the three. Uh, go into San Fran and face the three and zero oh, 49ers. 
You know, the Niners have the third best defense in the league this year so far. Yep. I want to say the Niners. Niners versus the Browns? Yeah. I think that's one of. It's going to be a tough game, though. It's so hard. It's so hard to gauge the Browns this season, man. They're all over the place. Sometimes they look like a, a great Super Bowl contender, and sometimes they look like the worst team in the NFL, literally. They only look good when but they're I, facing I, a Ravens defense. Seriously, though. Stupid Ravens, dude. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to go with the uh, – I think the Browns upset the Niners here. I think a lot of people aren't going to pick the Browns, but I think they're going to take that momentum – of of last week's game and i think they're going to bring it into to the niners face yeah i'm taking cleveland here uh, as well to play away and get the win in san fran so that's my upset that of the week. monday night football it, it's just pointless now i mean it's no di- there's not the flair it's not the prestige that's sunday night football the commentators suck. I mean, you have a guy calling himself Mucus. I mean, come on. Give me a He's, he's give referring me, to uh, Booger <laughs> McFarlane for those of you guys listening give me at a home. Decent, give me a decent game. Chris goes on the good commentators, weirdest Some prestige in the games. Now the players are more annoyed they have to play on Monday night than, oh, we got a Monday night game. Everyone wants to play on Sunday night, and I get that. But have Monday night games with a little prestige, a little, and that's dead. It's totally dead. It's it's like the Redskins defense bad. <laughs> well, that's really I disagree. I like being able to watch Monday night football. Me too. He said Sunday. Well, I'll oh, wait, take Sunday Monday? or Monday. He was saying Monday night football is... I like night football. Monday night football has no prestige. In the nineties it was it was it was something you championed for to be on Monday Night Football. Now you, you don't. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Did you think nothing was going to change in the 90s? Did you know that in Pittsburgh, <laughs> nobody when, says anything. <laughs> when when Monday Night Football is played in Pittsburgh, the Steelers are almost undefeated. Oh no, they've never lost a Monday Night game. Almost in undefeated. Well, did they've you know the 1972 lost. Dolphins are actually undefeated? They've never lost a Monday night game in Heinz Field. I think I tweeted that earlier this evening. I think and so. The Redskins so. never have been within ten points of their opponent on a Monday night game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is why he really wants Monday yeah, night games gone. He's a complainer. The Redskins are garbage at every game, but Monday night seems to stand out the most. Yeah, because that's I'm when if the I whole go back nation to every podcast, gets so... it's gonna be Chris complaining about the Redskins. It is. Hundred percent. Uh, so it's, that's we're... Chris in general complaining about the Redskins. <laughs> He's the worst fan. He is. He uh, is. Okay. What? Well, the season well, didn't even start, and he was already counting them as going zero and sixteen. We are the only team that has not gone eleven and five since nineteen ninety two in the league. Oof. So yeah. With that you mean being 11-5 said, or better. Every other team's at least had one 11 and five season, but us. We're just a piece of shit organization, and fuck you, Dan Snyder, and fuck you, fuck you, Bruce Allen. Well, with that being said, temper. with that being said, this is going to conclude this week's edition of the podcast. Huge shout out to Nuclear Nick, aka Barely Good Gamer. I'll have the link to his channel down below. Go ahead and subscribe to him and let him know that we sent you from the podcast. And just remember, uh, after this podcast, Juju Smith Schuster is going to go home and he's going to play some Fortnite and eat some pizza. That's right. That's right. Uh, and so, until uh, next time, this is Raining Ravens, Chris, Sarge, and Nick checking up out of here. We will see you in a couple weeks because we're not recording next week. Go see Steelers. You.